Jen Simmons here, designer advocate at Mozilla, to talk about CSS Grid. CSS Grid is pretty great. It lets us do some of the layouts that we've been doing for a long time, but much more easily and faster than the tools we've been using. And it lets us do a whole lot of things that were not possible before. So let me show you just a few examples of what it can do. Here I've got three different uh, image galleries, the kind of image galleries that we've been doing for quite some time. The first one is fixed, second is fluid, the third one is responsive. And you can see how those behave differently when the website has changed, the size of the browser has changed, right? The responsive one changes the number of columns, the fluid one just grows and shrinks, and the fixed one stays the same. Let's check out how this is being done. And you can see here this unordered list is where I'm applying the grid container code. So here I've said display grid and grid template columns repeat for 100 pixels. Display grid is going to turn on the grid and make it work on this particular unordered list. Grid template columns repeat four is saying I would like four columns please and I'd like each one to be 100 pixels wide. I've also set a grid gap of four pixels to put a little bit of space between each gap, uh, each column and each row. Here we can check out the one that's fluid and you can see on this unordered list I've said I would like there to be a display grid, please. Grid template columns repeat, so that's gonna give me a, a repeated pattern. I want five columns of one FR each, which means just take the space that's available and split it up among these five items. I'm gonna give one portion to each of the five. Uh, and then here on the third one, I've got on this unordered list, a different grid being defined. Display grid, grid template columns, repeat auto fit min max 120 to 1FR, which means I would like you, browser, to figure out the math and to decide how many columns to make. I'd like them to each be a minimum of 120 pixels and a maximum of 1FR, which means without any media queries at all, the browser is changing the number of columns based on the amount of space that's available, which is pretty great. Now it can be tricky to really understand what's going on with grid once you do something more complex than this if you can't see the lines. So exclusive to Firefox, we have a tool for you where you can click this little mini icon of a grid next to the word grid in the place where it says display grid and it will make the lines visible for you. It shows you here in purple the, the lines around the different items and the uh, the, the gaps themselves are being shown. We can sit here and make the gap bigger. See there, you can see it. This hashed line means this is where the gap is. You can't put any content inside a gap. If you want a space that you can put content in, <clears throat> then you should make some rows or some columns that are different sizes and then put content in those different sized rows. But the gap is really cool. It makes it easy to uh, quickly put space between items and you can see it here uh, as I display this. You can also do other things with grid. These kinds of layouts are very typical for what we've been doing. But one thing that you can do that hasn't really been easy is you can explicitly place items in specific places on the grid. So here I've got a grid container, much like the others. This one I've said, please give me four columns. I want them to each be the same size as the other. Uh, and then I've explicitly placed each item on the grid. This is where the grid inspector tool comes in very handy. So I click and I can see my lines. And I can see that, in fact, this first item starts on column line two and it starts on row line one. So column line two and row line one, that's how that gets here. Or this one, let's look at this one. We can see that it is uh, grid column one, two, three, uh, extending to line four, and it starts on grid row one, two, three, and extends to line four. This particular code says, hey, take this item and put it in this place. And then I can get a design that has white space, vertical white space, making it possible to space things out and make a uh, much more beautiful graphic design using the space of the page rather than having everything crammed up against the top, which is what floats want to do. Floats are like bars of soap. They just always float to the top of the page. Grid lets us actually make some space and get some air in that place, breathe, make it possible to breathe by creating uh, openness. It's gonna be really handy. You also don't have to make every column be the same width as every other column. We've been doing that for a decade without really questioning why. 
uh, there really isn't any reason. And with grid, it becomes incredibly easy to do ratio-based arrays, like a golden ratio, and other things that in the past, the math maybe got too complicated, but here it's going to be really quite easy. So let's check this out. This is the, the my example. If we look at my grid container, you can see here this UL uh, display grid. Let's turn on the lines. You can see I've got five columns, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 0.8 FR, 0.4 FR, 0.4 FR, 0.6 FR, 1.2 FR, which is going to really create more of a interesting layout than if everything were equally spaced. And the other thing I've done here, which is pretty interesting, is you don't have to have everything be in separate cells, not touching each other. When you explicitly place items, you can overlap them intentionally. So here I've got three items that are overlapped. Um, and you can uh, look at this, check this out, inspect it to see exactly how it is that I did this. That that middle one starts on column line two and spans across three columns. And it starts on grid row two and spans across four columns. Or this one starts on line four, line four, spans two, spans three. Uh, it really opens up a world of possibilities that you couldn't do before grid. Uh, Check it out. You can also check out, I've got a bunch of examples. You can check out any of them, inspect them in Firefox, um, turn on the grid, and unpack exactly how it is that these examples were pulled off. That's a brief look at CSS Grid. I hope you're as excited as I am. Use the Grid Inspector tool in Firefox to check out other people's examples and begin to really understand what it is that Grid can do. Whether you're a designer or a developer or both, you're going to want to get your head around this new possibility in graphic design on the web.